Hi and good day everyone. Chapter 3, Homeostasis. In this chapter, students should be able to explain the homeostasis concept, describe the importance and mechanism of homeostatic control system, explain the negative feedback mechanism in controlling blood glucose level, explain homeostasis processes for thermal regulation involving form, function and behavior, Describe the structure and functions of the kidneys. Describe the formation of urine. Explain the role of EDH and aldosterone in urine formation. Explain the positive feedback mechanism, which is the process of uterus contraction and release of milk by oxytocin. 3.1 Definition, Importance and Mechanism of Homeostasis So in homeostasis, any fluctuation from the normal condition is referred as stimulus. Alright, this stimulus will then be detected by the senses or the receptor and then will be sent to the integrating center. So in the integrating center is where the decision uh, will happen. So it then activates the feedback loop. Alright, and then it causes the response to happen. After that, uh, the condition will return back to normal. Definition of homeostasis. So homeostasis comes from the Greek uh, word, which is homoist, means same, and the word stasis, which means standing. All right, so homeostasis is referred as physiological processes where organisms maintain constant and balanced physical and chemical factors within their internal environment. So physical factors involve temperature, blood pressure, and osmotic pressure. And examples of chemical factors include pH value, concentration of sugar and salt in blood, and also the tissue fluid. While the internal environment is referred as environment of surrounding cells, example tissue fluid that envelop each cell. Organisms normally use homeostasis to maintain a steady state or internal balance regardless of external environment. That means whatever happened in the external environment doesn't influence their internal environment. Examples, human body will maintain the constant temperature at 37 degrees Celsius, although the external environment, uh, the temperature of external environment change. Another example is the blood pH is maintained within 0.1 pH unit of 7.4. Another example is that concentration of glucose in the bloodstream is within the range of 70 to 100 mg of glucose per 100 ml of blood. Importance of homeostasis. So organisms become less dependent on the external environment because they are able to maintain their internal uh, temperature as example. Organisms are able to live in a wider range of habitats. Um, and then organism can adjust its metabolic rate according to its requirement. So when the temperature increases, it will change its metabolic rate. Same goes when the temperature decreases, it will then uh, able to adjust its metabolic rate. Mechanism of homeostasis. So mechanism of homeostasis moderate changes in the internal environment. So every homeostatic control system contains the following part. The first one is the stimulus. So the stimulus is the one that will detect any changes or is referred as uh, input. All right, it will then be sensed or uh, will be then sensed by the receptor. And then it will then, uh, the stimulus will then be sent to the integrating center where it will define any changes and will start to generate the output. And then it will then, be passed to the effector or the output where it will execute the corrective action. So this is referred as feedback loop. Okay, one example is the control of the room temperature. So let's say the normal room temperature is 20 degrees Celsius or is referred as set point. So if the room temperature increases, it will cause the thermostat to turn the heater off. So when the heater turns off, it will then cause the room temperature to decrease and then it will then return back to normal, which is 20 degrees Celsius. However, if the room temperature decreases, it will then cause the thermostat to turn the heater on. 
So when the heater is turned on, it will cause the room temperature to increase back and then it will return the room temperature to normal again. So all homeostatic control processes include regulatory mechanism that use the principle of negative feedback and positive feedback. All right, so in this slide, any fluctuation from the normal condition, whether it increases or it decreases, is referred as stimulus. So this stimulus is later be detected by the sensors or the receptor. And then this stimulus is then sent to the control center. So if let's say positive feedback is activated, as an example, when it increases, positive feedback is activated, it will cause the factor value increase to be accelerated. And then if let's say the, the from normal condition it decreases, once positive feedback is activated, it will cause factor, factor value decrease to be accelerated. All right. So from the control center, uh, transmission of the nerve impulse or secretion of hormone is then be passed to the effector or the target organ. All right. So this is where the correction mechanism will be activated. So uh, if the negative feedback mechanism is activated, from the normal condition, if it increases, when negative feedback is activated, then it will cause it to decrease again. However, from normal condition, when it decreases, if the negative feedback is activated, then it will cause to increase again. So the decrement or the increment of from this normal condition will cause the normal condition to be restored again.